All righty. Uh, we, we have our we have our uh, our children, which are uh, four legged. Okay. They're Scottish deer hounds. For fur babies, that's the call yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, um, yeah they, uh, we started out with um, uh, kind of an unusual uh, rescue dog. They were half Scottish deer hound, half St. Bernard. Those guys were 36 inches at the shoulder. They are as big as a wolf hound. Um, the uh, being a, uh, so half deer hound, half St. Bernard. The male looked like somebody taking a St. Bernard and turned a third off each side. He didn't drool. That was the good part. Uh, the female looked like textbook Walt Disney, Big Bad Wolf. I tell you, Jackie put a granny gown on her one time, got a red cape with a hood, walked into a Halloween dog show party. Everybody took one look. She won. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a lot of fun with them. But uh, for years, we never uh, uh, were able to get a real deer hound. After they passed away, they lived to be 13 and 14, which is a long time for big dogs. Okay. Yeah. So and I you, believe we met them last time we were here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And they were just uh, uh, wonderful, uh, Maggie and Rufus. But uh, yeah. so we uh, we uh, finally got a, 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 somebody would sell us a deer hound. They had two of them to choose from, and we went to see them and couldn't. One of them you couldn't catch. She just ran around the thing. She had been playing with the boys. She hadn't been socialized at all. She just you know from puppy she ran with the brothers and just ran. So uh, uh, we brought them both them to the castle and they had a rescue dog here named Rufus, and uh, the. Um, uh, he was a border collie, Great Pyrenees mix. Somebody threw out the back end of a truck and kept going. So we put him, the two girls in there with him. And of course, he looked at us and said, Daddy, you brought me girls with legs. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, one of them kind of cowered down to him, and the other one just looked at him like, who are you? You know, I said, it has to be this one because the other one would be miserable. Because you know, <laughs> he's got to be able to stand up to him. So, anyway, so we got Maggie. And uh, I spent the next entire day in the pen with her before she would even come to me. She did, she was so I mean, she just uh, she just runs. She hadn't been socialized at all. Mm -hmm. So I started taking every obedience thing I could find uh, with, with the trained dogs for confirmation and different things. So um, so to get her used to being around people because she's scared of everything. Mm -hmm. And everybody said that's a mighty fine dog. I'll just show her one time in confirmation just as a courtesy to the breeder. Well, we'd never done that before, so I thought that might be fun. Yeah. So we did, and the first time out, she beat a grand champion. Wow. And people say, that doesn't usually happen. Uh, wow. So the next time out, she'll be another grand champion. Third time out, the grand champions didn't show up because they didn't want to get beat by a class dog. <laughs> and uh, make a long story short, um, it's been now, it's been right at 10 years now. Uh, uh, she uh, was the number, uh, uh, we, uh, she was the number one female deer hound in the United States and we went to Westminster. Oh, wow. Congratulations. So, That's yeah, awesome. I mean, Westminster, there are people that breed dogs their entire life and never get a chance to go to Westminster. Yeah. So she was an invitation because she was the number one female deer hound in the United States. And that was just a real thrill went to there. Then we took her to uh, the National Deer Hound uh, Show. And they had a competition, best head, best outline, and best gait. Well, her gait, when she was running, all four feet came off the ground at the same time. I mean, it was just, wow. just movement was just, you know, so her. Just a remarkable dog. Uh, she just one, one in a million, yeah. And uh, so we went, uh, they had the uh, competition, and she, uh, when they got through judging it, the lady that judged it had to be 80 years old if she was a day. Mm -hmm. So they said, uh, um, and the Patrick on Charlie Bertha, did you know he gave all three awards to the same dog? And she says, I did. Well, she deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> well earned. Well, well deserved. Well deserved. And next year, we took her to the Nationals. And uh, the judge was from Norway. Had never seen any of the dogs. So it was totally objective. You know, she won all three awards again. Wow! So I mean, it's just she, she was just one, one in, like I said, one in a million. The uh, then um, uh, the next year she went to it, and she only got two. Mm -hmm. And the judge came to us after and says, "I'm sorry, but I was told not to give all the awards to the same dog." <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, she still got two out of the three. <laughs> hey, <laughs> but, okay. But um, that, that shouldn't have happened. But it does, you know. But uh, it's just they want to kind of spread it around for everybody. But she was just a, a remarkable dog. We took her from New York that year to out to uh, Washington State. Yeah. Never made a mess one. Just that kind of you know. She wow. Was, she was just one one in a million. I tell you, it's amazing having just being gifted with such remarkable dolls like that, that it's like they're every bit of a family member and always keep that special place in your heart. Oh, you do, yeah. You know, yeah. so. So I've, I've, I've immortalized them, the first two, that in uh, Night, our second uh, deer hound, I uh, did a bronze of each one of them and I was uh, holding the shield. And I just okay. got, the, got those back, so I'm doing my sculpture back. I'm doing, I'm getting, doing more of my art now. 
Uh, yeah, that, that, and leave. Yeah, that uh, uh, projects I've been putting off for years get, get back into. Now mainland. is the time. Right, and I've got uh, quite a few. I got projects going all over the place with wood carving and uh, metalworking and everything. So definitely. Yeah. So. Well, Mike, we're coming up already. How soon May will be here? Before you know it, six weeks away. I know. So people got to get ready, get to the fest on time so they can catch the bus across the street to the castle and right. see Mr. Freeman. See, and then you'll be able to look in this room. And, and yeah. I've got this so that you can peep in. We can't let people go through the castle like we used to because of COVID yeah, and everything. Definitely. But we can definitely come in here and take a look around here and hopefully the Great Hall and things, you know, by this time next year, we'll have those up completed, you know. I hope it. <laughs> Definitely. That is our prayer. It will be completed. Well, Mike, your story, you know, you really dropped some nuggets about just what happens when you persevere, what happens when you align yourself with people that share your vision and can help you work towards it. And what happens when you know when it's time to make a transition and pivot. Looking into that camera, are there any words to the wise that you want to give to anyone that has a dream, thinks they might have a dream, maybe scared to step out, but you being one who threw you guys this humongous growing castle and a whole large years long festival has been birthed. What can you speak to that person? Well, the uh, started out as a photographer, you know, and, uh, photography. For, for <laughs> photographer. I photographed my own senior prom when I was a senior in high school. Wow. Next door neighbor had been to Vietnam, won a camera and a poker game. Forgot how to work it. The deal was learn how to teach him. I did. In the first dance, I shot it with a borrowed camera. <laughs> I, I made enough money off of that to buy my own camera. Shot my own senior prom that year. And of course, at 18, you don't know you can die. Because mm -hmm. if I messed it up, the senior class would have killed me. <laughs> <laughs> Pure dumb luck. Right place, right time. And uh, then uh, the first job I worked through in Murfreesboro, I went to work for a studio called Delbridge Studios. Well, the first month I was there, remember those high school composites they used to do with uh, all the senior pictures on them that hang in the hallway? Mm -hmm. I did 13 of those things in one month. Okay. Laid them out, lettered them in pencil, took them to the school, got them checked, brought them back, inked them, uh, got them framed, got all that done in a month. Worked 360 hours. Oh, wow. 90 hour a week. Wow. And I used to think that was a lot of hours <laughs> until, until I went business for myself. Okay. So if you're willing to work, I mean, uh, uh, if you want to go work 40 hours and go play, you can. And uh, But uh, I went in business for myself in photography. Uh, it was, I was school photography. It was seasonal. I worked uh, uh, nine months uh, a year, 18-hour um, days, and I had about three months off during the summer. And uh, so it was uh, a couple of months off during the winter. So it was uh, on and off, but it was seasonal. And mm -hmm. you can do those kind of hours all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I started doing the uh, researching on the castle, started building the castle in my off season. And uh, little by little, but anything's possible if you want to, bad enough. Yeah, uh, it's just that uh, nobody's going to just hand it to you. You know, they uh, uh, started with zero uh, and uh, working 12 and 18 hour days. You can achieve just about anything you want to, if you want to, bad enough. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a dream that uh, uh, anything's possible, you know. It's it just, is. It, it is. really is. I mean, it's just, uh, but uh, um, I've never given up. And uh, luckily I had a wife that has put up with 35 years of construction. <laughs> 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 Which most, most women in six weeks of construction on houses uh, no. that are out of their mind. So, but uh, sure, um, uh, she's uh, had to put up with a lot of it. But, you know, it's just... Uh, um, but it's a, you know, to me, the fun part is figuring out how to do it. I've had really uh, worked with different artists different times and uh, um, been lucky to have some really, really talented people sharing the dream. Definitely. So it's just, a, it's a, it draws people like yourself to me that, you know, and, and your field and, you know, want to see it happen. So yeah. make, make sure everything I, I'm a big Renaissance medieval kid, love the song Green Sleeves. So whenever I get to come to the Renaissance Fest, I get to, it's like that kind of getaway, be it escapism. It's just like you go in a different world, in a different village, or a day where people look all kinds of different ways, but everybody comes with just a certain carefreeness and a sense of adventure. And it's like no one looks out of place because, you know, it's the Red Fest. Well, the, the amazing part is, it's probably one of the most inexpensive places you can go. I just went to Disney World 
I went to the um, uh, uh, did the uh, went to the uh, uh, theme park there, and it was uh, uh, fifty dollars just to park. Oh wow! And another another two hundred dollars for the for the tickets for one wow. for one day. Wow! So when you buy a ticket to the Renaissance Festival, <laughs> free parking. And you can stay all day, see all the entertainments you want to, exactly. search over the castle. I mean, it's the bargain of a lifetime. So, you know. I'll take Renaissance Fest for 200, please, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it's a really good, you know, it's a, a real bargain, you know, and we kept, we kept the prices low, the drinks, you know, I think I was paying $7 for a, a Coke mm -hmm. in Disney World, you know, but you, know, you go there, you expect to spend it, you know, but it's, yeah. also, it's I mean, and the entertainment is really good, standing in line, it's not my thing, so we bought the yeah. express passes, and then every time we go to this one ride, oh, it's shut down right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was like, come on. <laughs> and the last minute we did get it, but... Uh, the, uh, the, the, the it's a different. I mean, it's a fancy, but uh, dragging dragging kids around there uh, uh, that would be a, a challenge for anybody. If you go go and stay at the hotels there, come out and do a couple hours at a time. You know, enjoy it. Take it. You know, take your time with it. We only had one day, so you know. Wow. But uh, it's, I haven't been there in years. But I mean, the, the things they do there are just incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I never forget the haunted house I went to. It just actually blew my mind where they actually had the ghost floating through. The furniture, oh, wow. turning and dancing, going around, and it was just like, and I said, they don't have that technology now. I know this was this is two years wow. ago, but it was just like you see them dancing, going around, and you're, you're going, oh, your eyes going by like this, and you're looking down into the big, huge ballroom, and they're just the ghosts are just floating right through. Some of those rides are so real. I screamed through the whole Tower of Terror. Okay, I and my cousin dug her fingernails into my arm. <laughs> the whole time. And then she's like, afterwards, ooh, let's do it again. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, that's the one ride we didn't go on. <laughs> and I understand why. Yeah, I, yeah, ooh, yeah. It was a one-time experience for me. <laughs> yeah. But the, but the haunted house, I figured, finally figured out how they did it. Piece of glass. Oh. And the, 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 the people, the ghosts were going around underneath you. And all you saw was the reflection off the glass. Wow. Which made it look like they were floating through the furniture. Wow. So, the, but I took, I took two rides to figure it out. But being a photographer, I, you know. You know, it's I mean, yeah. that kind of high in right. my life. Right. I just, but uh, it was, uh, I mean, the technology, uh, but they're just doing incredible things there. And uh, the new 3D movie was even better. <laughs> had a new one. Yeah, oh. the Buffett movie. I swear, they had this little thing come right out to your face like this. Oh. And, and the, little, the little kids in front of me were all. Yeah, that. some of those IMAX is like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the funny part is they had this thing where bubbles were coming down. And so they went, <laughs> you, they, they had bubbles going down on top of your head. Yeah, because they got, they got the 4D where now when there's water on the screen, there's water coming out of your chair and oh, really? wind, yeah, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it was, uh, it was pretty amazing. But uh, anyway, but uh, Renfest is like a walk back in time. It is. You just, you know, if you can just enjoy this thing and just uh, uh, imagine, you know, I mean, uh, uh, that's the way of, uh, a Renaissance Festival was. Uh, uh, it was a county fair. Mm -hmm. And now the, the vendors came in, tents, set them up. And other festivals, a place that build buildings, but we've always kept it tents. So it'd be more authentic. Definitely. And it is now, the name of the village has been Covington Glen. What? They, they, they kept Still that. Covington Glen. Still okay. okay. But the, uh, <clears throat> They call, it, they call it Castle Park. Okay. The, the county named it that, and so, uh, but uh, I mean, the, with with their with their facilities and their um, um, being parks and recreation, it, it'll carry on long after I'm gone. And, uh, Definitely. And I hope to have you know, have a museum here that uh, people can come to and you know see the, see the artifacts, see the things like it was, you know that uh, yeah. that. Uh, enjoy the experience all the time. Definitely, well, you will always have the mic. Freeman and Jackie Freeman stamp on it. So we appreciate what you've given to this community, what you've given to this little child inside of Grown Up every May when I go. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna see you with Mr. Mike Freeman coming up in May at the Renaissance Fest. Don't forget, get there early so you can get on the bus and go across the street and see the castle and hear the amazing, inspiring story of the one and only Mike Freeman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. Good. <laughs>